This is the Flotilla Friday call on Friday, July 30th, 2021. And Eric. Hey, hey, Eric. Does it? Um, we were going. I haven't met you. I guess. Do you recognize my face, Bill? Um, sort of. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Bill. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you. Yeah. Um, Vincent, you're really quiet here because you're a little bit away away from your mic. AirPod should be charged up, so I'll uh, go over. Could I have like a two sentence bill on on what you're doing? So I have a brief sense of who you are. Two or... senses of what I'm doing. I'm living my best life and helping Pete with the massive wiki takeover of some small quadrant of the internet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's one answer. <laughs> Okay, one answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good many I'm basically retired from full time work. So I'm, uh, you know, my hair is white from all that uh, programming. <laughs> oh, yeah, programming, <laughs> effectively. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on meta projects is my, my one phraser, I guess. And <laughs> I've met all of the people here and have similar ideas and aspirations. Yeah. Uh, if you and if you have a question, very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also really interested in what Vince is doing with the trove thing, which I think is really come a long way. So, uh, I've got a hack and deep notes page on, and I put the link in the chat. I'll do that again. <laughs> welcome to use it or welcome to ignore it either way. And we're recording, obviously. Um, so I think we were going to do Vincent and uh, Trove and Link Chainsaw. So yeah, just a brief, brief update on that. Um, so basically, um, so Link Chainsaw is a microservice that Pete spun up recently um, that he's been working on for a little while. Um, and we now have it um, which can be used with other projects. Um, and the first uh, use case is integrating with Trove. And so basically how that, um, how that works, and it's coming along really well, um, is, um, so actually let's, let's do an experiment because uh, this will um, be cool. Um, can everyone just post uh, a URL into the chat of something that they either uh, their project or something cool they found this week. Uh, just make sure it starts with HTTPS or HTTP. Um, just post like any any link into the Zoom chat. And it's okay to do more than one if you want. Yeah, you can do more than one. You can add text. Um... All right, here's my experimental uh, massive wiki. <laughs> All right, sweet. We got the links. All right, now. Um, you want to share your screen, Vincent? I am getting that started. Uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. I'm not. I'm not cool enough. Or I'm not host enough. Too cool. <laughs> uh, let me fix that. Okay, now you can share. Okay, so um, I am going to screen share the Trove event page for today's massive wiki call. Um, I don't know if you can see my pop ups, you probably can't, but all I'm doing right now is I'm going to Zoom and I'm clicking save chat. 
Uh, and then I am just going to rename that chat file so I can find it with today's date. So 2021 07 uh, chat. And then I'm going back to Trove and I'm going to go to this call notes file, automate links, click to upload file, and then just going to upload that, that file for the Zoom chat. Um, this could also be done by dragging the file in. Um, but it's it's easier just to kind of um, do this. Let's see. Okay, I found the chat file. That's probably the hardest part of this is finding the Zoom chat file. <laughs> Great, so once you and upload- you're, browsing, you're just browsing your hard drive, right? I mean, it is- Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Um, when you do yeah. save, when you save chat and you can do it in, as much as you want, um, it'll actually, it's got a thing, at least on the Mac that says show in Finder and it pops open the, the directory right mm. away. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, that's probably one thing that I, I need to optimize on my end just personally, but depending, however you paste the chat in here. So now it has the chat text file and now you can see it's, it's started adding these different links. Um, I would say the main feature that I would like to add is having the, uh, the links kind of pre-populate with a, uh, a title from the website here, and then you can go in and edit it. The reason why it's not that way is because you can click on a link like for example, I added, um, so factor and I can just, I can, you know, I could rename this like factor is a, a six site. Um, and then I can go to um, this like app flourish, like um, awesome mind mapping tool. Um, so I'm just, that's just adding a little bit of context. But then if you go to the event page, so basically what it's doing is um, taking the chat file, it's sending it to the microservice, and then it, the microservice is spitting back a list of just the links. Um, so it's not going to take any text except for the links. Um, and then Trove has another microservice that it sends them links to where it basically is going to each one of those websites and it's pulling the title, description, and image and then it's uploading them as resources in Trove and linking them to the event page. And so now if you go to the event page, you'll see all the links that were shared here. Um, so this is the Flotilla Friday Hack MD notes uh, factor. Um, it will pull the description logo and also the title from the website. Um, and you can then also change any of these afterwards if you want. Um, and then if you click view link or you can copy and open link in a new, uh, a new tab, then these links all basically become available as a kind of library of what was discussed attached to that specific event page. And I'll, I'll post the event page. So you guys, if you guys wanna play around. Um, but that's, that's my update on link chainsaw meets trove events. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Nifty. <laughs> uh, Link Chainsaw works right now. Um, the, it's deployed in a weird way. Um, it's a, a kind of a fork off of a, another thing called Zoom Chatter uh, that I that I wrote. Um, I think um, uh, Bentley is going to be um, expanding on the functionality of Zoom Chatter, so it's probably not something I'm going to work on very much. He's he's got his own separate project, um, uh, Easy Zoom Chat Reader or something like that, and um, uh, link chainsaw is mostly going to turn in, or sorry, zoom, my zoom chatter code is mostly going to turn into link chainsaw. And I'm hoping to pick up actually that functionality. So, uh, Vincent doesn't have to call two microservices where, um, I'll grab the metadata off the, the website. Um, or I can call the, the microservice he's calling inside link chainsaw. Um, and then I can also do there's, I've got code for, for doing, 
uh, the metadata on on some kind of weird things, um, especially in our community, like the brain, for instance. Um, I've got code that pulls out nice, you know, the the link title and stuff like that, which the web, uh, the brain doesn't doesn't present very well. But I know how to do it, so I've got code to do that. Coming along nicely, Vincent. Um, and another thing you, you notice there, I think, I, I don't know how obvious it was, but a lot of that stuff happens asynchronously. So it takes a few seconds. Um, uh, getting the metadata from links is, is something that is a non-zero amount of time because you have to go hit the website, basically. And right. Then, um, and then Bubble is doing a bunch of that stuff asynchronously. So it's not blocking the, the UI while it's doing it. Yeah, exactly. Which is fine. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a, a huge, I mean, it might, I wonder, I haven't done it yet for like a hundred links, like a Zoom chat that has a lot of links. So I don't know how long it'll, uh, it'll take. And yeah, if you like leave the page, if it'll keep running that in the background, that's probably the only thing I have to uh, look into. Um, I also have it running on three second intervals. If it, if I could run it faster, I could run it on like a one or two second interval. So um, separately, um, there's also the text of the Zoom chat, of course, uh, and uh, Lorelai and I and Bentley and I talked about um, sometimes Zoom chats are, are hard to read. The, the text file is full of, you know, the, um, the date and date time and the, the person and stuff like that. And some, sometimes it's got two everyone. It turns out that the Zoom, trend, uh, Zoom chats come in a, different, a few different uh, flavors. Um, so you can't, there's, there's not one te template for a line that you can use to trim off the stuff. So you have to be a little bit smart and use a couple different templates. Um, Bentley is doing all of that with the intent that that's a front end facing website, a, a, um, a website where people can go drop, um, a zoom chat in and get some, something that they can read. But I think he's also going to be doing the API version of that. So Vincent could be uh, taking the, the Zoom chat and it turns into a set of links and it turns into nicely you know, formatted readable text in HTML or, or Markdown or whatever. Yeah, and so, yeah, for, for the, um, and I'll put, I'm gonna probably add this into the HackMD notes, but um, yeah, so the, the next steps for for me are making it easier to actually like edit and make the links prettier from the event page or delete links that you don't want to be there, like a Google doc or something. Um, and then, um, like groups like, so interesting, the OGM calls were actually switching from zoom chat into Mattermost. What would be really cool is basically to just pull, like if, if there's a group that's using another chat, like Mattermost or Discord during the meetings, you could actually have it pull from any links in a channel during the same day or time of the time frame of the event. And so the next step is, yeah, kind of making it just easier to kind of like automate the process of like, okay, we're going to hook this up where we want it to work for all of our events. And um, Zoom has Zoom chats and it also has the Zoom recordings. And so like, you know, if, if we know we're going to be doing Flotilla Fridays every single week for the next, uh, on the same time for the next, you know, few months, we can set it up where the uh, Zoom recordings automatically get uploaded to YouTube on a scheduled time and the Zoom chats automatically will go through the, um, the link chainsaw at the end of the meeting. And then, you know, it'll send an email automatically saying, hey guys, whoever missed the event, here's the video, here's all the links, here's what we discussed, here's the link to the massive wiki. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking that that would be like the, the total end goal uh, to kind of, yeah, use tech to get us off tech and I don't have to spend any time after the calls actually doing any work. <laughs> so maybe this is selfish and, uh, but I think, yeah, I think it would be be awesome if you could do that. And you know, I would add that um, disaggregating them in in some senses, but um, 
adding the metadata of um, this is relevant for this reason, um, said this person um, in, in that context and to the degree people are willing to share it, that, that disaggregated data on factor or wherever, um, it, I'm, 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 I'm all about, you know, from, from my laziness, not laziness point of view, you know, like how can these things be broken up in ways that make their, the, the wisdom in their metadata and who they were posted by when and where um, accessible to anybody that you, the author, or you, the curator, or you, the group, feel comfortable about doing that. Like you can make this public, or you can make it only public to the people who are members of your group, or whatever. Um, so, and and it's interesting. I was sort of like doing a little little parallel exercise, totally mechanically, because I don't have the file that you generated. Um, but you know, just seeing how those, you know, each of those URLs generates an item on factor and could it be like tagged with with the i mean what would really be cool and you know getting getting into your, the thing that you raised vincent of like the way one uses one's own platform and the frustrations you have with what it doesn't do um there's metadata contained in items that you know, we can post on Factor, I can post on Factor that doesn't show up. Like, you know, um, you know, you just really want to easily, like if somebody's tagged it in the other context in which they posted it, like if you're posting an item that was originally on Tumblr or in WordPress, um, you, there are tags in that metadata, but they don't, come with the text and the image and the things that just drop into their assigned slots. Um, so anyway, yeah, but that, that's super cool. Um, it, that reminds me a little bit. Um, uh, I had a, a chat on Telegram with Sam Rose uh, this morning about uh, Massive Wiki and he had some cool ideas and observations and stuff like that. But one of them was um, about ActivityPub. Um, and uh, it's been a long time since I've, I've looked at ActivityPub, but it's a W3C standard. Um, and uh, I think uh, Factor and Trove and, and Massive Wiki would love to use ActivityPub to be pushing um, you know, stuff back and forth. The idea, the, the idea of it is that um, if you're a social media platform, you can, you can the, the things that you do on social media platforms, you know, send messages to a person or have uh, you know, have a uh, whatever we would call a note card kind of collectively, you know, a link or a resource or whatever. Um, you can kind of push those around to different services using ActivityPub. So um, I, I only looked at it real quickly this morning, but um, I, I think we would be pretty excited about using it. Yeah, you know, across tools, especially. Well, so I have one question. So something came up in the, in the, uh, OGN opened the Google mail list this morning. That was super rich. I ended up mailing it to myself, forwarding that note. And it's because I wanted to do something with the content because it was both connected and actually kind of was quite valuable. So the idea of being able to mail something somewhere that it could then you know, like the one thing that Evernote did, no matter how bad it is now, is they created a mailbox. You can mail, send a mail message to Evernote, and the thing is like in your notes, and you could tag it. I mean, so in a way, that's nice. We should, we should uh, totally do that. I would love to do that for Massive Wiki. That was uh, one of the early features of Social Text. Actually, I was a uh, before Social Text. I was a uh, an email um, jockey. Actually, I would have all kinds of filters and and forwarding and and uh, uh, inboxes that caught stuff and, and stuff like that. So I know that code really well. And so, so let's just do to that finish up, because you said about activity being able to push things. So I, there are items. 
Yeah, so having an endpoint actually where you emailed it and it turned into activity pub, that would be awesome. Well, it'd be nice to be able to push these things around because then maybe we could get the <clears throat> sharing part of the massive wiki, yep. you know, yep. have more experiments with it. Yeah, that'd be super cool. That, that it, it's and you know, again, you know, just so we're we're not all reinventing the wheel, you know, if there, if there are ways that we can inter interoperably do that, because that's on our roadmap, you know, our thought with the, the factor inbox is, you know, you see something you're interested in wherever. Um, yes, if it's if you're if you're browsing the web and you can use the browser extension to do it cool if you're on your phone and you can use the share outlet to do it cool, but you should be able to see an email that you got in and just forward it to your inbox. And you know there it is, and and you know that that kind of ability to do that with items, or or frankly, I don't know if, I don't know if this works into um, Activity Pub, but to be able to text something, you know, um, yeah. to yourself that way, because mm -hmm. I text, I always end up texting myself stuff too, because that you know seems like the expedient thing to do, and it accepts, you know, whether it's a a picture or a file or a link or this, you know, it represents it pretty well. Um, and I've, I've got code lying around for that. I, I built that last year uh, for Frontline Foods, um, which was a COVID relief thing. But we had it set up so that um, uh, the, the Frontline Foods thing was uh, we were distributing food to frontline workers, hospitals and fire firehouses and things like that. And so the volunteers would take a, a shot of some nurses in the hospital lobby, you know, holding some food that they just got from Frontline Foods, wow. and they would text it to. Um, we had to, you know, like 50 cities around the country, and we had a, a phone number for each one. So, uh, you know, random nurse, you you say, hey, could you text your your picture to this phone number, right? And it would go to, uh, go to the cloud. Uh, it would go into an Airtable. It it would strip the picture off and put it in a Google folder for the marketing team to pick up, you know, here's, here's all the Los Angeles ones. Here's all the Syracuse ones. Here's all the, you know, and then you could put post those on Instagram or whatever. So I've got that lying around. <laughs> Did you say air table? <laughs> air table, literally. Yes. <laughs> and actually there was another air table that was the, the master list of all the, uh, uh, phone numbers uh, and you know and and associating a phone number to the uh, I think to the, the whatever cities whatever teams you know Airtable tables and then also the Google folder that you would drop it into and stuff like that. Um, and Vincent I was going to say speaking of things that people have laying around um, we have a um, uh, bulk um, upload um, interface that, you know, I mean, the, the equivalent of you having those URLs, I mean, it works with, with URLs or with uh, files or images that has, you know, and I don't know to what extent this is, is useful to you, but I mean, it's basically got the interface you were saying, and I wish I had a thing where, you know, it's got the, it's got the loading, you know, loading bar and the, and while it's loading, you have the blank field that allows you to, um, it, it puts in the file name or, you know, URL, whatever it is you're, you're bulk uploading, and then you can modify the, um, the title and, and related text. And I don't know, maybe there's some way that, you know. It should, it should also ideally, sorry, hi everyone. Um, it should also ideally uh, bring in the metadata of the file. So if it's an image, for instance, that you took yeah. like at a, at a certain event and you have location and time and, or date on, that should feed in as well and be automatically applied to the, the item. Same with I guess, PDFs and, and documents. Right. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Oh, sorry, it is, it's finished. You're on. <laughs> just building on the same is like um, you need like an ID for every item, I guess. Um, so every link could also have an ID. Of course, the, a, a link is a, in itself is just a link, but whenever there's any other metadata attached to it, 
you need an ID. And th this ID is also part of the standards, I would say, of how you share. If you can make it into a sh standard, this ID, then you can start sharing it around. So is there something in it like that as well? Like, does, I don't know how it happens right now because a website has a new world and it has it has different ideas in itself as well but I, well no that wasn't clear anymore the do you think about building like an id that's a, a standard for for sharing well each factor item has an id right yeah it, it's a factor specific id right now we don't really have a standardized version for sharing with other platforms but yeah we have all of our items are have unique id the same with Trove. Uh -huh. not, not the same with Massive. But it does make sense to do it or not. Yes and no. I it if if it's a, if you're starting to add value to it by the you know uh, if you're starting sure. to add value to something, then it makes sense to uh, and and actually you kind of want a URI, right? Probably you want to say this is the canonical location for this thing. And you want to be able to subscribe to changes to it and things like that. Um, yeah. If it's just a link uh, and maybe like a title and even maybe a description, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, I, the the thing the thing with uh, yeah, of uh, the thing with a universal uh, ID is that everybody wants to come up with their own universal ID, right? It's like, well, um, here's the ID that I have for it, and you can all use the ID. You're welcome to it, and every you know, so everybody's going to say that, right? Yeah. So then you have to come up with some, uh, and Flotilla is the great place for this because Trove and, and Factor and Massive are all interested in interoperability. Um, so we could agree to you know have yeah either use the Factor ID or or any of the IDs, or we could invent a third, fourth kind of you know central place where we ID everything. But but even then, you always end up with the problem of you find somebody else who's got pretty much the same information with their ID, right? And they haven't agreed to your interoperability standard. So yeah. for something like a, a, a URL, it's pretty easy to go the, the opposite way or to have a service or whatever that looks at, looks at a Trove resource oh, yeah. and a you know, Wikipedia page with a link or something like that. And you can just compare the, the links and go, these are talking about the same thing. So you need that kind of bridging mechanism to um, to get around the fact that not everybody is going to be using the universal ID that that you think they should use. I'd be really curious about something like um, uh, Media Cloud, um, MIT's, or I think it's MIT's. I don't know if if uh, Ethan Zuckerman if that traveled with him to Amherst, um, but. Um, Media Cloud was like pulling in just like every every you know content news related URL and whether they were assigning IDs or whether it was all living in some you know URL identified um, way that would be more shareable as you say them and the other other entity like that is um, Webhose which is a commercial venture but at the same time. I don't know, just, you know. Uh, there's, uh, um, there's, we, and I'm looking for it in the background. Uh, we, we talked about, there's a, a number of bodies that assign IDs to things too, right? Um, so kind of like you get an ISBN for a book, there's yeah. uh, also things like that for scientific papers and things like that. Um, uh, and, and, and also there, there are like standards for a person identifying a person. So if you look at the a Wikipedia biography page, a lot of times they'll have the Wikidata version of that, which has got an identifier for who that person is in kind of a, a universal way. And a side question to that, like any content, like Evernote, you, you have a web clipper. Once you web clip it, you can have it on Evernote as a website, all the information, and then you can share that information from Evernote. But that somehow yeah. that is legal. So I wonder also about the limits about that. Like, it's not necessarily legal. Huh? <laughs> it's not necessarily legal. Just because it's technically feasible and they, they allow it doesn't make it legal. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's, all, 
there's a lot of sharing on ResearchGate that just is like whatever. So, and and sometimes the publishers kind of look the other way, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come yeah. after you, mm -hmm. especially if you're an aggregator. It would be interesting, kind of as an exercise, if if we did have that kind of canonical, like this this is the canonical ID for this URL, and then to see where it exists as it kind of like to see who is using that information, to see where that information has gone, both in a positive way, if you're like, oh, this is a great article, like this is really helpful and it's been shared in these places on Trove, on Factor, on Massive, and in the opposite way where it's something misinformation or something kind of propaganda-y that's been shared around, just kind of mapping out to, to see how it's been used, where, what people have added to it, how it's been tagged, that kind of exercise I think could be interesting, not essential at all but just one thing that comes to mind when, when we're discussing this and and this is where i i do wonder if if um we can get uh jim fournier and jlink and true.net involved just because that whole provenance and like you know this thing shared by this group to that group and and you know like this trail of, of provenance of, of content is their whole thing um yeah i mean standards abound <laughs> um, yeah the good thing about standards is there's so many of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i feel like um a different way to talk so i had proposed in mattermost a different way to like basically do the same thing we're doing now, but I feel like maybe get a little bit deeper into the kind of like pain points of why this stuff isn't already happening. Um, yeah, I was mentioning for anyone who didn't see the chat uh, or wasn't here in the beginning, basically us going through maybe each spending 10 minutes uh, if we have the time, like sharing maybe like one or two kind of experience flows of like how we best use our tools and also what are the things about them that we wish we could do and that kind of frustrate us. Um, so that could be, um, and yeah, like Eric, that could be like you, you were talking about Evernote, like that's like how you use Evernote, or it could be how I use Trove and Airtable or how Michael uses Factor. Um, but yeah, I think that would be a really interesting way to kind of um, see what's already working and what, where the, the actual pain points are. Uh, let's do it. How long do we, how long do we have? 20 minutes? What time? Or? I, I got to leave it. Uh, I promised my wife I really wouldn't hang out forever at lunchtime. So. But, um, but you'll watch the recording because it's going to be so amazingly interesting, right? right. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, I, I can catch up later. Yeah, I always have time later for the stuff I don't have time for now. <laughs> I mean, maybe one thing we could do is just do one or two today and then have the rest next week. I, I like the idea of taking whatever time we've got and just splitting yeah. it up. Um, so, so we could do 20 minutes um, and then let's call it 15. So we could do five minutes each as, as kind of a, a taster um, menu and then do that more later. What we want to learn is how does our current information flow work or not? and is really fulfilling as in our lives or like where do we stumble is it and the uh the, the special sauce here is having the the founder of the the tool actually use it and demonstrate it how they honestly use it and, and what they what they think is working and what they think is not working okay uh who gets to go first is anyone excited i'm i'm excited but but not quite ready um um, I, I'll go for it. Um, yeah, I'm not a founder, so I can I just, uh, you know. So you can kibitz. Yeah, right. Um, I'm a flounder. I'm <laughs> uh, yeah, let me. Michael, you beat me to that one. <laughs> Literally on the tip of my tongue. Um, let me share my screen. And. Uh, and hopefully there's nothing on my screen that we're going to have to like scrub out of the recording. So we'll see. Um, I, I went through and set up my computer a little bit beforehand. So, um, so here's me using Massive Wiki. 
I use Obsidian uh, at home, and I really actually do use Massive Wiki for different things. Um, so one of the things is Massive Wiki is a little bit slow to start, or sorry, not Massive Wiki, Obsidian is a little bit slow to start here. Uh, and uh, another thing to notice is that I have got a ton of Obsidian uh, repos or Massive Wiki repos, however you want to say them. Some of these for testing and some of them are actually in use. Uh, Wendy and Alfred and I have one called Sharing Spaces that we share. Um, and uh, you can see I've been pretty good at keeping notes here. Uh, Wendy uh, has a copy of this wiki, obviously, and she edits it once in a while, not a lot. I've, I'm still the one that's doing most of the editing, but uh, it's it's pretty um, common for us. Uh, Wendy, Wendy goes through stuff so fast uh, that um, I'm, I, we always, you know, want to take down a bunch of notes. So in here, you can see things like, um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm linking stuff uh, and people. And a lot of these, I noticed that the, I, I make links to people, but um, uh, I don't necessarily make pages for it. Uh, so if you look at the, the people directory here, we've got a few people, but not a lot, not all the people. Uh, and Obsidian is actually really good about this. Uh, so I noticed that Heather Kaminsky, my daughter, is here. Um, and she's not over here. So uh, let me let me just type into this um, uh, as a demonstration. I might be doing this on another page or something like that. Uh, uh, Obsidian does a good job of auto-completing things, and they don't have to be pages to auto-complete. It will auto it, it knows all of the links in the whole wiki. And so since I've linked to Heather before, um, it's presenting that as a, one of the things that I can auto-complete uh, in, into, into the world. Uh, so I really like that. And um, you know, someday I'll get, get around to making a, a wiki page for everybody. Um, uh, this one is just a stub, actually. It doesn't have anything about, about Jack yet. Um, probably the same with Ross, yeah. So here's the thing where I, I added a little bit of context. Um, social text is probably something where, uh, nope, doesn't exist yet. So I, I do that a lot with Obsidian. I, I have dangling links, and Obsidian is pretty good at, at keeping, me, um, keeping me using it. Um, uh, another really annoying thing about Obsidian is it doesn't have a, a regular window menu up here. The the way that you get to different Obsidians is with Alt uh, back quote, and I think I don't have any open right now, so I'm not getting to any. Um, this is my I I've got a a convention of saying private in front of the name of something so that I know that it's one of the ones that I don't really want to share. So Jordan Tsukut and I have a private wiki. Jerry Mikulski and I have a private wiki. Um, I have an old markdown wiki called, uh, that was running on Jingo um, that it's actually not mostly private. Most of this was on the web, but I named it private when I brought it onto my computer so that I would, I would uh, sort through it. Um, so let me show you real quickly my diary one. Uh, this is like my main personal knowledge management system. Well, the, another thing that I notice about the way that I manage information, uh, the, the information that, that Jerry Mikulski would keep in his brain, um, a lot of it is in my wet brain and on the web. So I just remember a lot of stuff and I can search for it out of Google uh, and find things. Um, that, you know, so a lot of the stuff that I've got is just little reminders to myself, um, names of things or like collections of things. Uh, so let me show you real quickly. Um, I've got some, some plugins, uh, third party and also built in plugins for Obsidian that I use a lot. One of them is this collapse all thing because I've got just a ton of uh, folders and subfolders and stuff for everything here. And if in this navigator, if you open everything up, you can't find stuff again. Uh, but anyway, um, here in here, I've got uh, kind of just general stuff, uh, diagramming tools or emergency preparedness or lists of tools or markdown editors uh, or rattlesnake, 
snake bite. So a lot of this stuff is the, the same kind of thing that you would do in Evernote. Um, I, I do an okay job at kind of saying, oh, I have to remember this and then, you know, putting it someplace, someplace in the, in the wiki and then, um, and then Obsidian is good about uh, searching for stuff if I need to find it. Uh, here's me. Uh, here's me trying Obsidian. Uh, these are uh, daily notes. Uh, Obsidian has a diary kind of thing. Yeah. Is this a question or is it just? Uh, no. <laughs> Um, I think so. I've gotten time. Uh, so uh, the things that I didn't show off are using other tools like Typora. Uh, I didn't show off syncing this. I didn't show uh, dumping st stuff in here and, and sorting it out. Um, so uh, there you go. I, I have a quick. I, ha I have a quick question, Eric. Do you have one though first? Uh, I could no go first. So uh, with Massive Wiki, my question is when do you go back and use the wiki most and what things do you never go back and look at <laughs> like what uh, most of this like, i i you know i don't often go back to this uh the things that i need a lot are oh that diagram you know diagramming tools come up or whatever right um uh, uh i need to remember how to do something a little bit tricky in git or in python or whatever right so my my go-to is still actually google um uh, I, I can usually Google up the thing and then in the list of, of answers, one or two of them are highlighted and it's like, okay, this is the one that I've seen before over and over and over. I'm finally getting kind of good at, at bringing those things back. Uh, the, the experience I had of using a wiki, uh, it was UseMod wiki back in like 2000, uh, 2001, something like that. I used it a lot in the same way. It was public mm -hmm. and a lot of times, I still do this actually, I still find stuff in my old wikis. The way that I used to search for things, the way I search in Obsidian now, is I would use Google and Google would show me a page that I had saved in my public wiki. I love that. Um, uh, now it's kind of broken up a little bit. I Google for some things and I, I search my, my wiki for other things. The other thing that's really amazing, uh, Wendy and I have been we have enough meeting notes and things like that. She'll start talking about something and we talked about it two months ago and I'll start typing the notes and making a link. And it's like, oh, we've talked about this before. So it makes it so that we can go back and look and see what we've done. Um, it's it's finally paying off, you know, after a couple of months of seeding it with enough stuff, just conversationally during meetings. Um, uh, and this is something that doesn't work with HackMD. The HackMD hack to get it so it's collaboratively viewable while we're using it doesn't show up the stuff that I would have in, in the wiki, right? Um, mm. But but much of the stuff I save, I'm not going to find again for years, you know, like rattlesnake bite care. Um, you know, it's going to be really important at some point, but, you know, I won't use it for years, probably. And so the pain point, so yeah, why don't we use a massive wiki for meetings? It's because we can't do like live synchronous typing. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm going to fix that, <laughs> but <laughs> not right away. Cause I'd love to start using massive wiki in replacement of hack MD. Me too. Yeah. I think that should be priority number one, just to be honest, because then that that's bringing other people in. Cause if, well, if, yeah, I feel like events. Our, and our other priority number one is uh, making, uh, kind of replacing Obsidian with something that's a little bit easier and has Git built into it. Because we're having we're having trouble just getting people started with with massive wiki and Obsidian. Mm, got it. But but ag agreed that collaborative editing is a big one. Oh yeah, and I was saying Bear app isn't that within also? Um, I've used Bear a little. I think uh, Bill has used it more. Um, right now we're using uh, Git Journal on yeah instead of something like Bear. One tool that works best, I guess. Hey, um, did I ask my question or? Uh, Go for the, it. The, um, the one thing I have with this setup is like what I like in the brain is that things are linked, like the, the links itself are visible. 
like it, it's also about how the ways link together. You don't get it in this kind of configuration. I'm I, I think you do, I think you do um, in a in a little bit different way. It's they're they're not so primary, but um, the way that uh, I didn't do a great job of showing links and I didn't show backlinks at all. Yeah, right. um, yeah, uh, it's it's pretty like if if I leaned into linking more, um, if everything was was I, and I could and sometimes I have and sometimes I don't. It depends on the on the material. Um, I like. I like that wikis are more flexible. Sometimes you can have just text and sometimes you can have just links and sometimes you have a mix of them and you can kind of go back. I can dump in a bunch of text and then go back later and linkify it. So, yeah. and, and I remember it does have a graph. Uh, it's just really bad, but it does have a graph. I mean, it does well, have a graph and it is, it's actually got two. Have, once you have too many links, it does, it, there's no overview at all, but it's a start and you can develop it. So. Um, the, the graph is okay, and then there's another one called Juggle, um, a third-party one, which uh, does some really cool visualizations too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so it's possible. So. You know, I'll Next just throw one. in the, the graph thing for me. I think Eric is saying, as soon as it gets really big, then all I can see, oh, there's lots of connections among these things. So it doesn't yeah. really add, I mean, it adds some value, but it's not useful for me. Although I am trying to use this to create connected sets of notes about things I'm thinking that I see are related to each other. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's a different, in a way, a different project than just sort of. The thing in. that a graph view does for you, it, 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 the brain is good at this. It shows you a neighborhood around the current one, right? And I think I don't use a, a graph view. I And I think it's an, an interesting thing. Um, I. I, I was talking to some of you about this, about, um, I guess it was Wendy actually talking about kind of maps of uh, maps of information spaces. And we were talking about, you know, there's a thing that you can do with the graph visualized visualizer. And I said, Wendy, I tell you what, the graph visualizer is such a poor representation of what I can hold in my head because, and, and what I can do with Obsidian, right? It's like, if I've got an information space of a hundred or a thousand nodes or something like that in my head, what I'm doing, my wiki, between the wiki and my wet brain, um, I've got different maps of it. And um, when I'm looking at a page, I can see the what I need to, and I can link one or two hops over and get to where 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 you want me to be or where I want to be really easily because I have that picture in my head from this page. But um, uh, it's multiple kinds of pictures, right? Sometimes it's about uh, the topics. Sometimes it's about the kinds of information. Sometimes it's about um, uh, <laughs> slices through things, right? Um, and I, I can do that in a wiki and it's really easy for me to say, uh, I, I need, and Bill's starting to do this actually with, with some of his pages. I need a list of pages that are, have this character, right? So it's pretty easy to, for, for somebody like Bill or me and using some, some extra tools, you can search for all the instances of a word or a phrase or, or sets of phrases, and then get a link list of the, the links to those pages and then make that another page, right? And you can do that manually, you can do it automatically. Um, you can do it with tags, uh, you know, you can do it by sizes of pages, There's lots of different ways that you can kind of link together the information um, in clever ways that I feel like I can blow past really quickly what I can do with just a simple graph visualization, which is not to say that a simple graph visualization is not sometimes useful. Um, I, I was showing her, I was trying to go through this pitch with Wendy and as, and I said, I don't use graph visualizers at all. So I pulled up one and I was like, okay, well, I can see that this page is an orphan and this page is an orphan and this one only has one link. So those are pages we're going to go over and fix that, that the graph visualizer did that for me. But usually, it's it's kind of like, do you pull out a paper map every time you you or actually nowadays we pull out Google Maps. But in the olden days, before Google Maps, you don't use a map very much, you know, because you know, um, I'm in this neighborhood. I need to get to that neighborhood. This is the subway line I take, or the other subway line if or the bus if the subway line isn't you know the right thing. 
people map in their head really well. And so little hints um, of reminders of stuff are, are usually what you need more than, you know, a, an automatically generated map. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I find automatically generated maps to be not as useful unless they're very restrained in their uh, focus and or context. But the brain um, isn't automatically generated, though. Uh, it's something you decide on and you build structures. Or, yeah. But, um, well, the brain, I would say, is not an automatically generated map. It is a mainly a map that you intentionally generate. Um, I guess I mean like taking the structure from a massive wiki and automatically generating a mind map without telling it like <laughs> like anything but node connections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. And there's a whole thing there. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of whole things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, Oof, mind. Um, okay, I, I'm happy to show some of mine later, which relates to it. There's one main issue, but I, I, I wonder if people that want to drop off the, we all stay until the end of the call or not? I'm not sure. Uh, we don't have to. Um, I, I so uh, one thing that we try to do uh, in in a number of calls, we're trying to do this better in calls, is to keep them scoped to time. Uh, so uh, the top of the hour is a good stopping place. Um, Bill uh, has to go um, and is going to go. Um, I can stay longer um, and we don't have to stop the call if people leave, have to leave. Yeah, maybe I, I'm happy to listen to someone. I, I can also bring in something what's best. Uh, I, I wonder if, if we can do factor or trove um, for another 10 minutes or whatever. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, Vincent and Michael, do you guys have time for to go over? I could I could stay on for another twenty minutes, half hour. Yeah, I think um, we're good as well. I can, I'm I not can sure. Stay, I can stay over. Um, okay, cool. So I mean, I don't know if if Eric, that means you want to go because you can't stay over, or no, no, I can. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'll listen first, but I would like to go in this call. That's another thing. I would like to show one aspect of it. So, that, so Vincent? I think we just have to pick the order. Yeah. <laughs> um, Vincent, if you if you don't mind going, um, I'm just I was just pulling together some things that show some of the problems. Um, that, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I could go yeah. first. <laughs> I hope there's not that many things, Michael. <laughs> well, <laughs> trying to be candid. <laughs> cool. All right. So um, I'm going to be brutally honest, maybe because I need to be honest with myself about what's working and not working. So this will be fun. All right. So we're um, on the dashboard of Trove. Um, I These are like the main calls to action of like what people can do, but I almost never use them. The only, well, I've already created most of the projects, so I feel like this isn't a very useful landing page for me anymore. And I've already created communities. I mean, it's nice to like go here because when I share this with people, I'm like, these are the things you can do. But I think what actually would be most useful for me as like if I were using this tool and like was able to talk to the developer and tell them what to do, I would tell them to put the saved um, tab first, but this is still like in experimental phases. And so um, that's why it's not first. Um, but yeah, I, um, I will show the saved items, uh, in a second. Um, I often use the dashboard to go and find my groups, um, and also to have a quick way to edit groups. Um, but if I'm on a different page, the easiest way to do that is actually just to go to my groups and like pick one from the list, except this won't take you directly to like the admin settings or the open page of the group. So then there's like multiple clicks. So I'm, tr I would love to like get anywhere on Trove in like two to three clicks possible. Um, I also have an, an, a pop up here, which I added, for example, my events. Like this is something I do all the time is like, I need to go to an event page. 
And so this will show all the events happening within two days of today. So like the last events that I like need to add context or, or a YouTube recording to, or like the future events that I need to like plan something will show up in my events here. And then also in my, I also have a drop down list of all the groups. Um, this is probably going to start getting pretty nuts after I add like 10 more groups. And so then this will end up being like favorite groups probably because even now it's kind of hard for me to find groups in here. Um, and they're not even ordered in any way, which I'm just realizing now so that's kind of stupid. Um, so yeah, these need to be reordered in some way. I don't know if I would let users order them or just have pinned and not pinned groups, but okay. Um, what do I actually use Trove for the most right now? It's probably the events. Um, and so going to like an event page, um, I've been using Trove as a way to share events with other people. So like I'll have a conversation and someone talks about the generative commons. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we had like a two hour call about the generative commons. Here it is. And I'll send them the link to that event page, which has the recording, the notes, the context, the groups that were there. And so I, I, I feel confident with sending someone a link and like leaving them without adding any context. And that is probably the number one use case right now for Trove is like, Oh, you care about organizational mapping? Yeah, we talked about that two months ago. Let me go find the event page and take this link and then share it in a Telegram group or something and say, hey, we talked about this. If you're interested, check it out. This is also a good way of like before a call being like, hey, get up to speed on the things that we've already talked about at this previous call that was like totally similar and related. Um, I also sometimes use these events to basically um, find like the links or the um, the notes. Um, and I would I would love if the like if it was easier to upload the videos because there's actually a lot of videos I have taking up space in our Zoom account or my hard drive that aren't yet on the event page because I just haven't had the time to upload them to YouTube and then upload it here. So I would like that process to be a bit more automated so this becomes even more useful for me and the same thing with the notes like if that, that yeah notes could be just like embedded in the page somehow um the other main thing that i use trove for is to catalog things so for example um i just came across this um this is actually a mind map software called flourish and so what i will do um if i want to close my tabs is I'm starting to use the Trove, um, save to Trove tool. Um, I think I have to turn on my bookmarks bar. So yeah, basically if, if let's say I want this, I want to like catalog this link to Trove. This is like, I need to close my tabs and I want to find things later. Um, so what I would do, oh man, they don't have a homepage. That's not private, okay. Um, Probably do, but you'd have to log out, I guess. Mm. Oh my gosh. No, I don't have a minute. We're in the middle of a presentation. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> All right, so um, if I go to the home page. All right, well, they really don't want you to do anything but log in. So I'm gonna do it anyways. So if I catalog this to Trove, um, the good thing about this is I can attach it anywhere that I need it. So like if I have an event coming up in like two weeks and I want to attach this thing to an event, or if I am working on a project and I know I'm gonna add somebody to that project and I want them to see this link, it will basically all kind of be interconnected and linked. Um, so this basically lets me add some quick tags so I can say like, this is a resource. It is a, uh, like a, it's a tool. Um, it's also a systems mapping tool. 
Um, I'll usually add like one or two topics. So I'll add like uh, systems design and thinking and maybe like software. Um, and then share with. So like, for example, I use this occasionally because I know that once we turn on the saved feature, I'm gonna be like, hey, check out your saved stuff. And then it's gonna show all this stuff that I've shared with other people. So like, I think that Bill should check this tool out because it, I'm um, working on, I think it could integrate with Airtable as like an alternative to Graph Commons. So I would just share it with that person. And I also know that people in Kiko Lab and like any future people in Flotilla would be interested in this and also mind mappers or systems thinkers. Um, and so I just wanna like catalog these things in a way where like, if, if something happens to me, other people can like find this thing in a reasonable time frame. But I also sometimes want to be reminded to find things myself. And so this isn't doing anything right now, but I like to do it because it's fun. I can set like a reminder date when I want to view this later. And I could say like, you know, check this out later and I could add my own notes. Like I've been doing this a lot, um, but I haven't built the way to go back and actually incentivize myself to like go back to things. Like I haven't set up notifications or reminders to look at things later, but this will be super helpful in the future when that is available. So I can say like, this is a cool tool. Um, I need to like reach out to them to see if they can enable the live CSV. This is actually something I wanna do. Um, live CSV for the non-enterprise customers. Um, and then I can also add it to Trove. So I have Troves, which are like collections. And so um, interesting platforms or resources for mapping would probably be two Troves that I have that I'd wanna add this to. Uh, and I could also link it to like today's event page or next week's flotilla call Oh man, those don't have dates. Okay. Um, I would want to add it to a call that has a date, ideally. Um, and then I can also link this to a project like Flotilla project. Um, Vincent, can I ask a question? Just to, sorry to interrupt about the- Go ahead, yeah. The notion of like, you see this thing that belongs in this trove and that trove. Does that mean that you are essentially um, tagging this thing so it shows up in both places or are you putting a copy of it in, in each of those places, if you know what I mean? Um, yeah, great, that's a great question. So this is its own, because I, I curated this, this is now its own resource. And right. so it has its own unique ID in the database. Um, it, it is a tool, it, so these are the, the types these are the relevant communities. These are the relevant like audiences. And these are all links to other databases. So like this is the list, the database of communities, the database of audiences. And so it's just links. Um, and then it also has a link to my personal interaction with this resource. So if you were to go and to bookmark it, the tags would be collaborative. You can remove or add a community and then you can also add your own layer of interaction on top of this resource. So this resource is now pointing to one interaction. If you were to go and to bookmark this, then you would have a separate interaction that is linked to the resource. And you could add your own notes, your own to-dos, your own reminder date, and then you could add it into your own private troves or public troves. But um, it means that, okay, sorry but it's all linking back to the same resource. So this becomes a collaborative thing that we're all kind of editing, but can have our own tags or views of. So if you edit, uh, let's say, if you wanna add some, some information to, like one of the experiences, I, I mean, I asked this because this was, this was a thing that I was gonna bring up in talking about Factor too, is like, so there's a, a link and, and it's brought for the first time onto the platform. It could be brought there by somebody manually putting it there by somebody um, using the browser extension to put it there by somebody finding it in RSS feed. And they would all be the same thing, um, but 
you know, do they want to, they, they would all get you if you, if you click out of, of the platform to get to this link, whatever it is, um, they would all take you to the same place. But do you want the fact that something you might bring in has say, doesn't, doesn't populate, um, let's say it populates the title field in such a way that assumes that you're able to see a graphic, which in this manifestation you can't, so you want to add to it the name like Flourish, you know, maybe, maybe Flourish, if you imported the Flourish homepage, it would say a place to do X. But since Flourish is a graphic there and has a logo, it doesn't say Flourish and you would want to add Flourish colon ahead of that headline into the title field. And if you make those kind of edits, are those edits forced on anybody else who's linked to that thing? Or, I mean, you can look at it as a pro or a con in, in all of these situations. Um, versus people being able to do their individual posts of that same thing and, and customize it, annotate it, tag it as they want. I mean, there's no right answer here. It's, it's just like, oh my God, it, <laughs> it's, been, it's been quite a challenge, you know? Um, yeah. To deal with. So, so yeah, basically, uh, and, and there's some, I think some bugs probably because it's not showing the tags here. Um, but how it works for a resource is it's a wiki, it's a wiki war. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, and, and that's why this feature isn't available for everyone is because like only, <laughs> so, um, only I've been thinking, you. yeah, so I'm not even lying. Like, uh, like having conversations about like, okay, let's actually just get a curator token, uh, on Trove and then give people with a certain reputation of curating things so like i trust all of you in this group to curate things with good enough quality and then if you find something that i've already bookmarked that you would probably add to it and not make it worse um and so there's a certain level of like trust within the network and like reputation of being able to curate something now the the this is all an experiment and a test and so this gets me to, this is one of the biggest issues is like, there's a lot, I like people are like, yo, you have your own like bookmarking tool. Why do you still have 800 tabs open? I'll tell you why. It's because um, this, um, let me just view the resource. Um, this basically resource curation, I am only curating things that I think other people should find and that are like almost more useful for other people than me. So like, if I find something that's like, really that I'm like, oh, this is so cool. People need to know about it. Like that's just kind of how I think is like, oh, I wanna share this. And so a resource is something you want to share. Um, then I, there's a difference between resources and links. Links is a totally different data type, which all of the, the links from the Zoom chat they don't get uploaded as resources because it would be too noisy to upload every single link that was ever posted in any group as a resource. But you can take a link and then convert it to a resource. And, and that way um, it's like, okay, this is high enough quality that we want to make it like a shared thing and we want to collaboratively work on it. And so within like the flotilla community, there's resources. And so this is the, the shared resource library of any resources that have been tagged with Flotilla. Um, and so these are all like high quality, like they have an image, they have a nice title, they have a URL, they have tags, you can like filter them by who curated it and added it, right? So like you could see like, oh, what are the things that Vincent found within my community that he thinks were interested, you know, interesting for this group. Um, and then there's links. And so links are basically a, a bit more, um, and, and maybe this will connect to the systems innovators jam. And I'm sorry if I'm going over, but I feel like this is probably an important thread. Yeah, uh, this, is, this is really useful. I mean, it, it makes sense to do it for enough time to get into the weeds, I think. Yeah. Um, so 
what I haven't done yet is merge together. Like I have so many personal links that I'm like, these aren't resources yet, they're links. And I want them to be in my personal saved thing. And maybe they're links that I, you know, catalog within systems innovators, but they shouldn't be like resources yet. And so this is showing a bunch of like pinned links within the systems innovators group, um, which you can edit. And because they're private, you could rearrange them and you could like the admins of this group have full say over what the title is for these links. No one else can edit it. Um, once it becomes a resource, then it becomes shared across groups. Interesting. Um, or possibly shared across groups. And so then like going to the, so this uh, might break because there's like 216 links and I have not optimized the loading yet. But so this is pulling from the Airtable uh, with the list of all of the links that have ever been added to the Systems Innovators group chat. And so um, it's a little noisy. Some of these links need to be deleted. Some of them might need to be edited because there's no title or description. Um, and then some of them, we might wanna add them as resources because we wanna share them more broadly. Um, and what you can do is because um, we've had basically this like system of tagging with hashtags, you can then filter by like all the resources that are related to like DAOs, for example, or of type article, clubhouse event, book, video platform, or that were added by users that have a Trove account. So we could also link your like Discord username if you create a, a link on your Trove profile that, that matches a Discord ID that has a link associated with it, then it will show you as a curator of resources. And so this is also a way to add kind of like community currency, currency aspects, which like I want to reward myself through Trove and also reward other people for like being awesome curators and collectors within, within the community. Um, and, and I want this library to be like publicly available where people can see in real time what we're talking about and the links we're finding and, and then also have the links to the kind of context. So like each one of these links also came from a specific date, which could have a link to a specific event. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, um, all inter interconnected. Um, and then this is the air table. Uh, which might take a second to load. I actually just iframed the Airtable. Um, or I can just show you guys the Airtable with the links. So yeah, I, I have been using Airtable for about two years. Um, I have a personal basically collection of like, um, you know, five or 10,000 different databases. And I want to sync those onto Trove and I haven't been able to do it yet because it's too complicated. And so <laughs> that's the main thing that is holding back um, is like, how do these things get imported in a way that like it makes sense and there's context and it's not just a giant dump of stuff. And so this is the air table of all the links from the systems innovators calls. They're grouped by the meeting day. Um, and each one of them has like a platform, a group name, um, a link to the Trove. Uh, it, it could have a link back to like the Trove resource if it becomes a resource. And then also all of the meta metadata that we just started. Um, So yeah, each each one of these links now has like an image and stuff. So I have to I have to set that all up. Um, I'm going to show one other thing because it'll kind of go full circle, and then um, I'll be done. So I'm within, just gonna, uh, sorry, I'm yeah, just just go ahead. While I'm loading uh, this, go ahead, Michael. Um, resources and links are you know two different animals, um, and a resource is. Uh, is a wiki essentially it's I mean or it's collaborative collaboratively edited if a resource exists 
exists, there's only one of it. Right. Um, but links are specific to the uploader in the sense that like if you, if you upload all the links from a flotilla call and from a systems innovators call and there has to happens to be one site that is in both it will show up in both but be editable separately by by each group or an edit that takes place in the list of links in flotilla would affect the list of links in systems innovators um that's something that is yeah, that part hurts my brain still. I don't okay, know how to. Okay, I'm totally. Um, it hurts my yeah, brain. Yeah, how? So, no, so this is how I've been thinking about it currently. Is within a group, like within Systems Innovators, if two people post the same link within that group chat, it's going to dedupe and it's going to have only one. So there shouldn't be a duplicate of links within a group. Mm -hmm. But if there's two separate groups we might want those separate groups to have their own version of that link. Yeah. That piece is not currently solidified. I, I don't know because so, so many of these groups are like connected and two groups are actually the subgroups of the same group. And so that's where it gets complicated. So I'm, I'm almost thinking to make it simple, like links, there's duplicates outside of the circle of one group chat and then resources like there should really not be duplicates. And then the, the other thing that you can do is we can have resources that when you create a resource from a link or if a resource and a link share the same URL, they could be connected automatically. And so you can also go to a wiki page and then see all of the versions of that resource that are like links in your groups kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so these are my personal like saved items. Um, and so this is actually across all data types on Trove. So like some of these are resources like Flourish. Some of these are organizations like Regen International. Some of these are Troves. Um, some are events. Some are groups that I favorited. Um, and then you can then go into each data type and find your saved whatever so these are my this is my calendar of like my either saved or events that i'm hosting um these are the projects that i have uh saved which i'm not really this isn't really useful for me right now but if you're like looking if you want to like follow a project and like get updates then those updates can like show up here so this can be like, this could eventually turn into like, if Trove has any sort of feed, like, like me as an individual, I just want to like follow my friend's projects and like, as a major update comes out, like, you know, have a place where I can see that. Um, and then, yeah, these are my resources, which have like my to do's and my personal notes. And I can like add more notes to things. Uh, I can unfavor it. I can connect it to a person here so this is something i'm really excited to use is like connecting things to other people or different groups so like i can like share this with eric um and then um you need a um commercial uh interest attack <laughs> what's that like if somebody shares their event that they want to promote to you that's not that's not the same kind of intention than somebody sharing to you a resource that they really believe is especially valuable to you. That's a yes. <laughs> so what we want to do is probably um, before inviting lots of people on Trove, um, have some sort of like reputation system where if somebody, Eric, if I tag some like three things with you that you are like, this is ridiculous. I'm not interested in this at all. You can like get rid of it. And then I might lose the ability to share my events, <laughs> right? So there's yeah, certain things there's you could do. That, but yeah. There's definitely, yeah, that's the harsh way to do it. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, so. Sometimes uh, useful. Yeah. yeah, so this this is the last piece, which is the, the trove. So these are like my personal collections of anything on the site and they could be shared too. And I, 
will get use out of this when it's like, I talk to someone who's interested in mapping for the first time and I'm like, oh, hey, guess what? I have a list of a hundred mapping tools that I found throughout the last few years. Here it is and send that link. So I'm not doing that right now, but that's like the main reason to build Trove was to be able to like be like, hey, here's this collection of things. You can then go into it on your own and see all the connections between these things and everything else. And so it's, it's like, that's the pinnacle of like the knowledge network. Um, it's not working for me yet, but it will work as soon as I can import my personal Airtable data into Trove. And then others can do the same once I can do that too. The mind is active. <laughs> The people are silent. <laughs> uh, the, huh. oh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I could react to many ways in what you're sharing. I would love to share my piece uh, and make it really brief, maybe even. But we didn't even hear about Michael now, so I'm not sure. I mean, I'm just selfishly more more eager to hear yours than to to show mine. But um, but okay, if you, I, if you I were wanna... to brief, especially since it's, ours is going to take a little while. Yeah. So I I'm going to tackle a problem that I don't have a platform myself, but I've been researching this stuff for a very long time, and um, uh, I hope I can make it work this way because um, otherwise I'm into trouble. Um, priority, yeah, for, for sense weavers, I recently migrated everything, so I'm not sure how well this will show on my, yeah, my personal stuff is too personal. So I want to share the screen first. Um, so I'm gonna do for me, numbered lists are essential. So I actually moved everything from workflow to <laughs> Romy search um, because the numbering system is working way better. And there's no numbering system in, in uh, workflow, but then in other tools there is. But this one, I love how I can do it in um, in Rome. Does, does Rome uh, do the numbers for you or? Yeah, so this, I just numbered this list. Uh, and then um, I can move around stuff with a keyboard shortcut, move it up and down. And it makes me view instantly what is more essential to me or not. So in terms of curation, for me, that's kind of essential that something is higher than something else. In currently in, um, what's it called? In, well, also in Facebook now in groups, they're actually implemented. Like you can vote something up or down and that's like a group curation. But I think it's also really essential that people can do individual curations where you can really see what they find better tools for what jobs and what they find uh, a better text. Like for instance, you could have, there's nonviolent communication. I think most of you heard of it, at least for the method, there's like, 10 introduction texts and some of them are really vague and hard to get and then maybe there's one really great introduction text on MVC. I would like that to be on top and that makes that needs to be kind of a voting system uh, and I would like uh, people to be able to vote it up and down and to move it around and to to have essential stuff come up and I, for me it's essential to um, if I would prepare this, I would be able to explain it more clearly, but something like, how do you move stuff up and down? In a, in a database, you can kind of give scores from zero to 10 to one factor, for instance, like you can have a factor of uh, importance and, and then urgency, and you can make them weigh and you can make things move up and down. So I think there's something there as well for Trove and the other platforms. I wonder if that's better to do it collaboratively or to have something where you can look at each person's uh, ranking separately. 
or maybe yeah, both. Or, or, or it's both, like you can make them, yeah. uh, bring them in together. This is my link, this is my um, order. And then if, if, if you've got a similar question, uh, like su suppose it would be something like Quora and everybody's got their answers, but they have an order in their list and they could give a score, then maybe these scores could add up or s I, I don't know how that would work. Yeah, and, and actually it would be really cool if, if I could have my own like like maybe there's a hundred people doing scoring yeah i want to take 25 of them and then i want to rank each of them differently i want to weight each one differently so phil gets you know 100 and vincent gets 95 and michael gets 50 and i get 40 or whatever yeah and and and, and everyone's approach to something is very different like funding resources which funding resource is the best for building an online platform or knowledge curation that's like an ordered list and it uses all these resources from th that are already there, but somebody else might build a list on funding resources for sustainable development focused on water, waterways yeah. and clean water and water gen regeneration. Yeah. And that, that's a very different order. So how to think about these things, like how do you build in your curation what comes up, what can, what goes down, what's more most relevant to this issue for me right now. So, so you want you want to have the ranking and then you also want to say what what score you're ranking on or what you know what what's the yeah. context of the score. And then well, I, I, I would want to be able to see, you know, let me yeah. let me select the different kinds of scoring and pick the one that's most important to me, but while preserving the other ones for other yeah. uses. And then people could maybe even add a, a verbal reason or verbal summary of um, this is really interesting. Uh, this funding resource is really interesting for us because I've seen them do this in this project already and it's really close to what I want to do. Yep. That would be like a, a, a one line. So you kind of need it like a hybrid of these kind of ordering systems and then reasons why. Yep. So, and, and then weird negative values like this is somebody I, I, I really don't trust, but they have a, an interesting idea or don't do this, you know, yeah, um, yeah, make sure that you don't do this one. <laughs> the list of the list of all the social networks not to use including yeah. Facebook. <laughs> yeah, why, why does Facebook suck and how would we want to solve it? So then an ordered list that it could really yeah. work because it yeah. might also motivate people to understand. Ah, that's beyond true. <laughs> More a joke than a serious joke, maybe. But um, okay, uh, real quick, Eric, the I found it's actually really difficult to have both a personal and collaborative rating system um, because you have to have different databases to store the numbers. So, like, I don't know mm -hmm. if this is getting too technical, but I was trying to make it so you can reorder your links, and I finally figured out like how to when you drag them around, it like puts a number order for each link. So it sorts them by the number. Then I realized, wait a minute, if this link is shared into another group and they reorder that link, it's gonna change the number. And so then you need to have a whole another layer of data, at least if you're doing like a SQL database of like the rating, the uh, I, uh... where it is, and the thing the thing where the thing is and then the rating for that thing um yeah so and then it, yeah it gets really complicated i found does it help if you split up order and and uh score i'm not sure yeah I don't know. no good question <laughs> yeah i'm just talking through it i think there needs to be a whole nother data type just for ratings which has the links to what it's rating and and yeah, what other things you're comparing against? Yeah, it's 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 one of those mindfuck problems, but I I think it makes a lot of sense to think about it because this is where it becomes like ah, I really get the information that matters to me. Like that, I I build an even more complex system in this like in my head, like thinking of what if you would tag people? You have evaluation tags. And evaluation text can be anything. Like this person is sharing too much um, commercial information. Then once you get a link shared and this tag is there, then there could be a rule. Okay, if this rule is there, then people are warned that you share a lot of commercial information. And there's already something like, oh, I don't want to see it. Or oh, maybe it's interesting, let's see it. Um, 
or but there's there's many things there like evaluation tags can be it's got a scientific basis it's got um this is a very well built uh, text it's it's concisely written um this person uh, also backs this text there's all these kind of evaluation text that you can add to stuff to make it to, to show that it's more valuable or not so that's even another approach to to this curation um question and for me it's uh yeah it it makes sense to do this evaluation deck but that's also even a more complicated system because then you have to wait i don't know how that works but there's a piece there i guess uh of trying to figure it out <laughs> so just so we have this for the recording um i feel like if we're treating something in the same way that like wikipedia treats a wiki page or trove treats a resource then the rating becomes like my individual rating of this and then multiple people can have their own ratings of it mm -hmm. um and then you can have averages or you can you know see your own view but yeah then if that resource is in multiple different contexts like for example if you have let's say facebook is a resource like it has a wikipedia page for facebook as a trove page um um then if that resource is like in a you know a list that's like the best social networks or the worst social networks it might have a different rating in each one so then that's a, that's another layer is like the thing where the thing is and the rating well, are you also rating i'm sorry i forget if you'd mentioned this but are you also rating the people within your group like in that specific topic area? Because for me, it would be like, I trust Vince on Airtable like 100%. So his his opinion of Airtable is more important than someone who doesn't use Airtable. So it's just for your own perspective, I wonder if you would, or like, I trust Pete on Massive or I trust uh, Michael on magazines or comic books. I know Michael's like very knowledgeable that way. Can you, would you have an algorithm that you're rating people within your community on the topic area? I haven't got there yet, but because uh, it feels like one of those things that, yeah, I don't want to do wrong. Um, it would be super cool to be able to have like, yeah, reputation that's attached to specific contexts, like a skill or a, um, a domain um and yeah and and then like for sure for sure so my wish list for that is that the construction or the the a reputation is constructed personally for me i can i can nominate people and weights into my reputation score right and then it's going to be um Phil, you might have your ratings for different people and a different selection of people. And then I would have a different selection of people and different ratings for them. And then of course, the meta version of that is that uh, you have a, you can start curating lists of curation uh, metrics. So then Phil, you might say, I don't really care to figure out the reputation for it, but I'll subscribe to Vincent's curation or Pete's curation or Michael's curation or Eric's curation. Yeah. That's the principle behind uh, liquid democracy as well, where you've got like, um, you can give trust to others. Uh, what is it? Delegated trust that, or? Yeah, delegated to, uh, to democracy, no. Yeah, no, there's a word for it. I, I don't remember it, but anyhow, that's the same principle. And there's a second layer to it, um, which makes it a bit more complicated, but it's such a beautiful thing i named it before to vincent as well like how stumble upon used to work that was immensely beautiful i think they had like an algorithm where uh it's just a collection you 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 like a link and once you like a link you say which category it belongs to and then it's sent to the next person that also likes this and and if the more people like a certain link the more likely you 
the next person will also see it within the same topic. And that algorithm worked really well for me because I was on there a lot and I constantly got really interesting stuff. There's something about that that we could maybe also in, implement in these platforms because that reminds me of the uh, the secret TikTok thing. Ah. Um, I, TikTok works that way and was... makes it so that it's super addictive uh -huh. because you're always <laughs> looking at something that's amazingly interesting. Yeah, stumble upon was cool. I wasted a lot of time on stumble upon in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we're doing it now on social change, so it's worth the effort and <laughs> the time. <laughs> yeah, I think, exactly. I think one thing that is really interesting about that that needs to be separated from rep reputation is the, the, the choice to pursue at a given moment um, things that are are delivering you what you're looking for so that you're not distracted by the stuff that, you know, you have, you have taught the platform that you're on to know that you find X really engaging, um, but that um, right now you're laser focused on this task and the criteria by which you're searching should not include that which you find engaging. I mean, engaging is not the point of your of your activity right now. You know, single-minded focus is, and you know, nobody, no no platform has that puts that control in the hand of the user. So you know that that whole idea of of filters. I mean, if you if you accept the fact that really an algorithm is just a set of filters that have been that are triggered by things that, as it's generally set up now, you don't have your hands on the controls of the, those dials are automatically generated. But if if we can say, I mean, you know, with Factor, you know, we want to say at the risk of not entertaining you. We want to put those, you know, levers and dials and tick boxes and all that stuff in front of you and let you decide, okay, now, and we haven't gotten to this point, but I mean, I think it would be good to be able to have the, the you know, surprise me whimsy dial that you want to turn way up and say, now I just feel like sitting back, show me some stuff that, you know, will entertain me based on you know, on inputs I've made before, but that being a choice, not a, not a. Yeah, kind of a choose your algorithm for your search right now thing. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah, just, you know, <laughs> set your filters. And the second level is uh, like, if you create your own list, it helps for me to understand what I want to work on is like, there's different levels. Like in some tools they use like, um, milestones or long-term goals and then you attribute some to-dos to certain milestones some of that works and some of it doesn't work and everybody's got their own system but there's something about if i have my own curated list i want to like i want to have my own projects and i want to see which ones are most interesting so there's also part of the curation like to be able to see within everything i'm doing what's most essential for me to work on now. Um, and even in collaborative lists as well, I guess, like there might be a to-do list and then, um, yeah, having the orders there. I don't know if that was clearly ex expressed enough, but I did my best, yeah. Eric, did you get to do as much demo as you wanted? That's the one essential point that I wanted to bring in right now. I can bring in other stuff, but if this is such a big thing that for me, gotcha. I can right now. Yeah. Shall I uh, show some some factor? Yep. Madness. Sure. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick, quick note, just because uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but 
I was just sharing Refind really quickly, um, which is what I use. It's actually when you open up a new tab, it shows you like each day, like two to five articles that are like curated, picked for you. Um, and the one that was picked for me today is Bubble raises a hundred million dollars, um, paving the way to make technical co-founders obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I wonder why they chose that for me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, hold on, let me just make sure I've got um... my my rough equivalent to that is um, my Google Pixel uh, has a news feature, and they the news feed is pretty smart about what I'm interested in, and uh, does a, a decent job of showing me stuff that you know I I. I based on Google searches or whatever, you know, from a week ago, they'll start to, to bring some stuff back and and they kind of watch um, what I'm interested in. And it works pretty well. The the, the real thing I like though is Twitter. Um, I just love having a blast of random stuff scrolling by. And um, I like a lot of serendipity and a lot of randomness. So that's the thing I, I really use is Twitter and a, and a fairly carefully curated following list. Um, okay, I'm gonna just this Pete, the thing that you built, could it save from Twitter? Um, I think Michael and I were talking about this. Twitter is kind of a beast when they they're they're not friendly to developers, external developers. They don't really mm. don't want you looking at their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they've just switched it yet again. They switch it like all the time. Like how you, I I think uh, they've actually made it a lot harder with their current API. Um, or or they they're very restrictive. Um, I I actually have a developer request into them to be able to you know, get an API key for the new API. And I got about halfway and then they said, oh, we need more information. Mm. And, and actually the, the crazy thing is, this is actually, I wasn't gonna make this public or anything. It's just for me being able to like search and sort through Twitter stuff. And part of the, the they, they want you to drop your drawers and tell you, you know, tell them what you're doing and why you're doing it and how big it's yeah. gonna be. And, whether or not it's going to be competitive, right? But the weird thing is, one of the questions is, um, describe how government agencies are going to use the data that you're retrieving. And I, I, you know, I, I tried to say that I'm not <laughs> going to show it to any government agencies, right? And they ding me and sent back the application. We need to more, know more about the government agencies, man. What are oh they going to see? Oh my gosh! And I'm like, dude, it's, I don't know, man. <laughs> So I haven't I haven't gone the next step on that, but I missed my joke. I want to make a joke. They really Twitter bootstrap that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. Um, uh, I so there's there's you you can still use the old API, but they're going to shut it off at some point. Um, so mm. I, I'm I'm definitely interested. I've I've played around a lot with the Twitter API and how to get stuff out of it, and they're always shooting developers in the head for it. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, damn. Damn, that's rough. I'll keep you posted. OK, thanks. Yeah, I don't use Twitter much, but I see like uh, at bot save this. And then it's like, yep, I saved it for you. And I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> oh, nice to see um, Factor, by the way. What's that? I said, nice to see Factor. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sort of uh, popping around just to make sure all my uh, screens are are loading okay. <laughs> um, so um, I won't do a total like show and tell or anything. Um, this is fun for me because I usually have to do the demo, so I'm excited to see Michael at work here <laughs> <laughs> and and see how much better at it you are than I am. Um, no, no, I wouldn't say yeah. that. <laughs> I know you didn't say it. <laughs> um, so um, one of the things that I think is relevant to what we were just talking about and, and both a frustration and a goal is um, when 
when you think about um, uh, what, what it is, you know, what people have um, reputational value, what context in which they have reputational value, um, the idea of being able to say, you know, I know about this, I'm curious about this, is sort of the very basic metric um, that we came up with as a way to sort of, you know, tag yourself. And with the idea that that feed into the kind of system that we were talking about where um, beyond the obvious kind of social trust things that exist on some platforms where, okay, I'm gonna follow this person because they know about this thing that I'm interested in, but then I have to see all the things that they're interested in, even if they don't relate to me. And I have to know who that person is to know they're knowledgeable. If, you know, admitted, with the admittedly imperfect um, metric of self-identifying your expertise, like I could say, you know, I know design and totally suck at it and be completely wrong about the fact that I know about design. But um, if, if it's possible for people who think they know about design to say, I think I know about design and for the fact that they have looked at design related content to um, feed back into the, the reputational value of that link item post uh, profile that they are trafficking with, commenting on, highlighting, et cetera. Um, second tier is that you can get to um, the idea that, okay, let's look at all the people who say they're knowledgeable about design and see where the, the cumulative um, wisdom seems to reside such that we can say, oh, that one person who's put down design like doesn't actually have knowledge that is ratified by any of the other 99 people who, um, who list design. So that should be you know, counted less in our scoring of, of design stuff. But the, the, the frustration is what you, you really want it to be something where you don't have to already know this person has a rep, you know, it doesn't have to be, I want to like um, defer to Vincent's knowledge of, of no code, um, you know, creation. I can find that because other people who know about no code have sort of ratified Vincent's knowledge and Vincent has ratified other people's knowledge. And so I can find my way to content um, without the, the personal um, social graph and also without a popularity metric. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm getting off and talking, but, um, but that's, that's what exists here now and the frustration of like what it really should be and isn't. Um, Cause you know, I wanna go to, um, Zoom. Uh, you know, I want to go to search and and search design and like here I'm seeing a bunch of items and well here I'm actually going to go to the search page. Um, and this, this uh, right-hand area of the screen that is the, the filtering capabilities that um, you know, might be done in all different ways. You know, these are things that have design in them in some way. Um, and it's really broad. You know, my results here are, are 1,240 you know, results. 
And uh, I might want to narrow that down by saying, you know, I only want the stuff that, um, that Michael has posted that relates to design, which is only 303 items. <laughs> um, uh, but, but, you know, without knowing who he is, I, you know, want to know the, be able to say things um, reputationally. Um, so frustration. Um, and uh, talking about how I use the platform, one of the things that's definitely paramount is that, um, you know, I use the, uh, um, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a text from Lauren, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, I use the browser extension a lot and I like to say um, that, Hmm. Um, so I use the, the browser extension and I cannot see. So, you know, the last thing I saved something to apparently was the Pro Football, Pro Football History stream. Um, but, you know, I can, I can uh, go to, let's see, this is not correct, but I'm going to go to. Uh... You can put it in our stream, Michael, if you want. Yeah, I'll do that. That's good. Um, I can get some notes about it. Um, that's a great thing. Um, and then I can uh, go to after. I could do this in a number of ways, but um, I'll go the sort of intended way where I can search my streams for. Um, And um, you know, then I can I can tag this thing. Um, chosen a bad example because I don't want to do model tagging in here. But, um, but then if I. Uh, This is one thing I'd like to improve. So when you have yeah. existing when you have existing tags, it applies quickly. And if you're creating new tags, if it's like between this talk to our database and the front end, it takes a bit longer than it should. So that's just a heads up for people. Um, just trying to uh, look for some other things that I might tag with one of those tags, but um, yeah. Um, at any rate, the the um, the ability to to uh, tag things from the browser extension as you're putting them in would be good, um, and uh, the ability to I can look at these in in different orders um, depending on how these things had been collected. It might be something where um, you know the the way they were named was significant. So it would be more useful, like if it was a list of people, um, it might be more useful to listen, to look at it. Oops. Um, Um, 
So, let me just see if I can so there's a there's a pattern amongst all of our tools that there is one uh, experience in inputting data, whether or not whether you're writing a a uh, wiki page or creating a project or resource in Trove or adding a, a link to a factor stream. And then the other, the other side of it is then the experience of uh, finding that information when you need it. And so, yeah, I'm curious to know, like, Michael, from your perspective, that mm -hmm. second part in terms of like, what is the best use case in which you use factor to find things, which use Whoa. cases... Uh, do not use it for, or, you know, does it not work for you, for you? I mean, I find that I end up using it for very, very um, disparate things that don't overlap a whole lot. I mean, I use it for some things that do overlap, but, you know, these, these recent streams I have here are mostly examples of things where, um, you know, like there's, there's a stream for, you know, Fort Greene in Brooklyn and, a bunch of people contribute to it and I might look through it. I, I, it's, it's got some uh, automatically fed information. So there's a lot of, you know, I can, I can just scroll down and say, oh, this is, you know, this is new news from the last few days that relates to Fort Greene that comes from uh, Patch and comes from, you know, Brick Underground. And there's probably something in here from the Times and, um, and that's, that's really cool. But then I want to say, so what are my fellow contributors here? What are they saying? I want to see only the things that are posted. Um, and, you know, this, we haven't been using this a lot. So this, the, the things that have been posted are going back about a year. Um, but, you know, there I'm seeing stuff that, that actually, um, you know, actually I or somebody else in the neighborhood thought was, of interest um, and then I could boil that down to what's tagged. And so that searching kind of mechanism within a group is great, but if I came on to um, Factor and I was interested in Fort Greene and I went to, um, so this is a, this Fort Greene is a, is a group it's um, it's a stream created by a group, um, so that like the people, it's it's public, but the people. I mean, this is another thing actually that um, is this is something I would say like I do feel good about um, the way that this works in the sense that it it's really easy to make things granular, granular, and you can say that. Um, this is visible to the public, you know, easy to change that it's the, the, this is from the group Fort Green people, you could make it so it's only visible to people within the group. Um, but this is visible to um, the public and you can decide whether anybody on the platform can comment or only members that um, I choose can comment. And um, so, that's great, and you know I can invite somebody new who's on the platform um, by. I have um, a question. Yep. Or, or um, a remark. If you click away the, if you go to the cross, because then we can see what's behind the cross. What? I I just had a potential insight mm -hmm. uh, about activity. Mm -hmm. And now you can see posted, highlighted, comment, tagged, hidden. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if it would make sense to make the uh, to make the system remember where you were last time and what you what, what you were browsing last time instead of the default of you right. just see your basic mm -hmm. feed. I think it would make sense because then. You, you, you kind of come back to your mode and if it's not working for you, you can you can find another mode but if it's only people use people don't want to click again uh so if if you're in a different mode and 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 you want something else then you will do that probably if you really strongly want it but um i guess if it would memorize ah uh last time you look at highlighted and you come back to the highlighted 
Yeah, it, it, will, it, will help you, it will help you be in the system and it will help you use those other features more. And, and again, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you might even want to leave up to you, user preference. Like, you know, as you leave, leave a, an area to have yeah. save settings for your next visit, yes, no. Um, yeah. Because it could be that you've got a bunch of filters in place. So when you come back, you'll be like, wait a minute, there's barely anything here. Why is that? Oh, I have to undo what I did last time. If it's, yeah, if it's yeah, yeah. default for it to save the settings. Yeah, then you can still have a, a, a notification. If there's not a lot on the screen, then you could have a notification. Or these filters are on, remove the filters, like in- Right. When you say- Yeah, I mean, um, just relating to that, um, we have it so that the, the creator of the stream can show, you know, can, can set the defaults for people who are first visiting the stream, like, because, yeah. This thing is historical. Um, the um, order in which the things display and the size in which they display is defaults to this is large because it's visual, and this is in chronological order by the dates that were set. These are not the posting dates, these are the edited dates of when these things were published, and it's going back in time. But if somebody who's looked at this stream before came to it and said, okay, I saw that last time I was here that it's the oldest thing. I wanna see um, what, what things have been posted most recently, they could change the order to, oh, this thing from 1963 was just added. And before that, this thing from 1950, I'm no longer looking in chronological order of the objects. I'm looking in, you know, what's the most recently um added and and likewise you know the user has that control of saying okay now i only want to see the things that are um you know right. at, and seen and i have not seen yet uh, so what's that? This one. Did, i have seen this one and i haven't seen this one yet if that's a selection which would be possible yeah now yeah another thing and this would would point to a like kind of oh i wish um is like when you come to a stream that is um is fairly volatile um volatile in ter terms of amounts of content or yeah yeah um high velocity we sometimes call it but um um, is a volatile stream called uh, magma or uh, rapid? Um, Radio. Yeah. Bada boom. Um, so this is a, a stream I actually haven't used. It was, it was set up a while back and doesn't even reflect kind of current current politics. Um, but this is um, a stream that pulls in aggregated feeds from a lot of different news sources. So it's it's what we would call high velocity. Like this, this has <laughs> this has uh, you know over over six hundred thousand items in it that date back you know a long long ways. Um, but a lot of it is. Um, and, and Pete, this speaks to some of the stuff that we were talking about when we were last talking about, you know, who, who is saying this? Why is this here? Um, you know, I wanna know, um, I wanna get a sense of people's takes. So um, if I click posted, these are only things that, you know, individuals posted in the stream so I can get a sense of, um, you know, what their take is, what kind of stuff they, um, you know, publish. And if it's like a written thing, you know, what they have to say. Um, so, and then I might also say, okay, like I seem to like the stuff that this guy, um, Michael posts, I'm just gonna list, look only at Michael's stuff um, and, then I want to look at only Michael stuff that's tagged. Uh, so you get the tags in from these news sources, or 
No, no, these are tags that we've added. And that was another thing I was expressing earlier is the desire to be able to, um, so right now, if I go to tag something, so these are all the tags that have been used anywhere in this stream before and, and you know, highlighted here are the two that have been added to this, this particular item. What I'd also like to see is um, like tags in the metadata from this item or tags that have been like added in another context so that there would be, if, if, this, if this stream was just being created and there were no other tags, there would be some suggested tags for this item, which again, I would need to choose to accept. Uh, and maybe there would be a button that said accept all, you know, if they were, they were like if, if, if Tumblr's or WordPress's or the New York Times or whatever my source had in their metadata a set of keywords and I wanted to make those my tags on factor, I could accept them. Um, but, you know, they, they are a different animal until I choose them, they are a different animal than, than fellow human in your factor group or team um, choosing them. Um, I'm meandering all over the place. Interrupt me anytime with, with what's useful to you guys. But, um, another thing that uh, does and doesn't work exactly the way we would want it to um, is some dragging and dropping. Um, like, you know, this is this is an old stream that was like kind of historically looking at only the 2016 campaign. But you know, this is a, a news item that's a current new, news item, but also relates to the 2016 campaign. Um, if I want to have it in that stream, I can drag it over. And um, oh, actually, I see that stream was about the libertarians. Oh well, so it's not really relevant. But just if I if this was relevant to that stream, I could put in a note and you know share that into that stream, um, and that's a cool thing. But there's not as much drag and drop as ideally I think there should be um, in terms of being able to arrange stuff and order stuff. Like I would like it if one of the orders available to you here was manual and, and you could like have a group of things that you just dragged around and made them be in the order that you wanted. Um, so sort of a weird combination of a of a, how I use it, venting about what doesn't work and demo. Um, so this is looking at that same um, stream in the most space efficient way so that I can you know, cover a lot of items. And again, all the, all the filtering um, works the same way. So I'm, I'm looking um, only at the things that were hosted by Michael Postman. But if I wanted to look at more current news and not look at things that were posted, um, you know, I'm looking at stuff that's happened in the last few hours. Um, I could say I only want to. I could say I only want to look at the recent stuff from uh, Neiman Lab. It's nice though. I haven't seen this as clearly before in other tools, but I'm not sure others might have. Um, and again, in the in the realm of the views of things, so this is the the spacious, you know, big picture view. Um, another view. There, there are actually three other views we'd like to have. One is, I wanna clear out, I'm in this stream, I came here to read, I wanna clear out all the other stuff. I want to see nothing on the screen, but this item and be able to just arrow through from, from item to item and just have that kind of clean album view. Um, 
another view that we used to have, um, which we will have again, is a little, a little uh, um, pin up here and you can look at it in map view so that if you're looking at things that have geographical associations, you're looking at them geographically. And uh, the one that we, we wish for and talk about, and I know would be close to, the, to people's hearts here is that if you had, like if, if a stream here was a dump of some chunk of Jerry's brain or some activity that was going on, you know, on another platform that has relationships between the items that you could look at it in a map, map view, a non-geographic map view, but a, a node and, and link um, view. Um, so that is, there's another frustration. Um, what else can I tell you? What else can I show you? So I, I don't know about others, but energy wise, I need to have dinner. <laughs> uh, just I have, I've had calls before as well. So my energy is a bit stretched yeah. right now already. Uh, uh, lunch for me. Would... Yeah. Huh? Lunch for me. Okay. Same. And, 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 and kind Same. of like, a sort of round of what, what we talked about it uh, today would be nice for me because I, I actually really liked and um, appreciated the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Oh, sorry. Let me end sharing you. the screen, maybe then. then yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Thanks. No, no. I loved what you shared, uh, Megan. So, yeah. so we talked about Trove and Links. Um, we talked a little bit about, about ActivityPub. Um, we talked about uh, uh, emailing into uh, wikis and factors and troves, things like that. Um, I in. talked about Massive Wiki. Uh, Vincent talked about Trove. You talked about uh, you're not a platform yet, but um, keeping track of stuff. Um, yeah, and, and ranks and levels like and ranking, yeah. Yep. Boring, yeah. And Michael talked about factor. Um, I, I cut a fair bit of that into the notes. Um, and these notes, um, Flotilla is an interesting organization. It's an, an unorganization. Um, uh, Jerry, Jerry called it a white space between organizations. Um, and we've actually kind of kept that. Uh, so we have a wiki, a massive wiki that we're, where notes accumulate, but um, it's uh, it doesn't have a it doesn't have the normal thing that we would have, which is a website where you can view it. We don't have that, kind of on purpose. Uh, so let me post a link to the wiki on GitHub, and that has a uh, meetings folder. And these these actually. Let me let me uh, show you how I'm going to save this to the wiki real quick, um, and maybe that's not stretching our attention too much. Not that I'm going to do any any deep detail about it. So this is the <laughs> wiki. Um, it doesn't. Most most massive wikis have a web front end where it looks like a website. This one doesn't because we decided not to not to. Um, so then these are all the, the meeting notes. Uh, I'm going to go to this HackMD page and I'm going to click download as markdown. And that's going to go to a massive wiki on my uh, on my computer, which is here in meetings. Uh, and then uh, I could do it a couple different ways to upload it. Um, uh, but I'll go go do it the I, I often do it through Obsidian actually another way to do it is just on the command line. Um, uh, so if I go here to flotilla wiki. So it's obsidian to. 
I'm using, I'm going to use Obsidian to post it to GitHub, which I could, I could do that also the command line. Um, but uh, so here it is, here's a, a page in Obsidian and uh, that's it rendered. Uh, an interesting note here, if you look at, I'm going to switch back to the markdown thing. I put a link to uh, the uh, June 4th notes because we talked about taxonomies in there and it's kind of related to our discussion of IDs. So I put the link twice. Um, I put an internal link um, and then an external link uh, so that um, if you're looking at it in Obsidian or a massive wiki builder, uh, you would be able to click on this and it would also do the right thing. Um, if I click on this, uh, oops. If I click on this, then uh, there'll be, this is the old, you know, the, the previous notes thing. This is about taxonomies and there's some uh, IDs in here and stuff. Uh, so then this page also now has a backlink to today's page. But then uh, if you're looking on GitHub, this link wouldn't work and you'd have to use this one, GitHub or something else. So anyway, now it's on, on here. Um, and this was super easy to do. I really like how I can just download a markdown thing into the right spot. Um, uh, HackMD follows a convention that we have, which is to put the title as the um, first H1. Um, uh, the title is in two places in Obsidian. It's an H1 here and then also the file name. Um, so there's a whole story about H1s and file names someday we'll get into. But anyway, to upload it to, um, to upload it, I'm going to copy this. Uh, I'm going to do command U for uh, push. And then I'm going to say, um, this is a commit message. Uh, so now down here, I can watch the, the Git process happen. Uh, so if I were a civilian and I didn't know a lot, I was, if I was a software, if I wasn't a software developer, the way that I'm interfacing with Git here is just command U and typing a commit message. So I don't really have to know about Git or anything like that. Um, it goes through a multi-step process where it um, saves the files locally, you know, in the Git uh, in a git commit, and then it pulls down any changes that have been made to the, the wiki um, by other people uh, to make sure that I've got a, a currently synced thing. And then finally it pushes everything up. So now that's on the, um, did I have it here? This is Geneva, a second cousin of mine. Um, I've, I've forgotten where I put it on here. Oh, well, uh, github.com slash flotilla. So right now this link is the main or only way to view the notes online without having to be in like Obsidian or it is. an app. Yes, yes. So the HackMD and no longer exists? The HackMD still exists, um, and uh, what I normally do is, as soon as it's on the wiki, I go back in here and change. Uh, I actually delete everything and put a thing that says "Move to Wiki." I see that. Um, um, and I'm going to click on this. So now I'm going to leave this page. Well, actually, let me show you something else. Uh, HackMD has a complete version history of of the, the notes. Um, so this thing shows that I just deleted everything um, and probably down here it says added something. Anyway, you know, throughout the meeting it's every every 10 minutes, something like that. Every time there's a change, it starts to save it. So I can, I can revert to these versions. Um, there's another thing where I can actually link this HackMD with a document on GitHub. Um, but the the HackMD revision history and the GitHub history are different. Mm -hmm. you, you actually make a link between one of them, not all of them. And so it gets super confusing to do. So I, I don't do that much anymore. We did it for a while. So anyway, I, I say move to Wiki and then HackMD has a list of all the HackMDs that 
I've created. Um, and most of them are going to say move to wiki because I don't use HackMD as a document store. So move to wiki, move to wiki, move to wiki, move to wiki, move to wiki. Sometimes I'll, I'll add the address. So anybody who comes to this yeah. thing, out of I was gonna I was gonna say I've been adding all of those links HackMD links in the Trove events and now so yeah it would be very helpful to add the link to the GitHub or the massive yeah. one yeah um, and and in a better world I might I guess I, I I was gonna say something and then I'm I'm gonna take it back actually uh, another way to do it HackMD will let you continue to use the same you know we could have you can name the the link. You can get. You can set the URL to whatever you want. The hack. You know the the ID part of it. You can set it to something like Flotilla Friday Call, or Flotilla Friday Notes. But I guess we actually want different ones for. So I guess you'd want to say Flotilla Friday Notes and then the date twenty twenty one oh seven thirty one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's, okay. there's a there's a glitch there where we lose the, you know, we lose the link. The way I'm doing it. This one, it doesn't say move to wiki. I think it is actually on the wiki, but I have to go in and make sure that that's true. And then and then I'll change this one. Would it make more sense to not delete the whole thing and just put move to wiki on the top? So it's like, uh, and then like a page break or something, you know? Yeah, the, the reason I delete it is to make it really clear that, um, that you're not looking okay. at the right. primary copy anymore. Um, you want, you know, you want a single master of someplace, kind of, right? And you can still, anybody who, who kind of knows the trick can still look at what all the content is if they need to. What I should do here is put the, at, at least this would be a lot better if I always put, um, the link. The, yeah, I could always at least put the link in there so somebody could, you know, if they ended up here, they could. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking I, in the past, uh, I was experimenting with taking um, a call video and the related HackMD and making it uh, a factor post with some information about it. And I realized that now that those HackMD links are, <laughs> are junk, are junk. <laughs> Some, somebody has trashed them. <clears throat> somebody not very cool has trashed them. Yeah. Um, we actually have uh, Vincent and I uh, in ancient times uh, set up uh, this website, um, you know, when Flotilla was just a baby. Uh, and it was in a call like a couple months ago. Somebody, you know, I said, should we put these on the, <clears throat> you know, on the web? Should we have a website for, for, for Flotilla? And somebody said, you know, that would kind of, if we had, if Flotilla had a website, then it wouldn't be this white space organization anymore. So, so it's not on the web as, as a website. See, I would, I, I, I'll be honest. I've never went to a past Flotilla notes because there was too much friction to find the notes. Totally fair. And I want to go back into the notes because I think the notes for these calls are very useful. So totally fair. Um, I would like to inquire how we could lower that friction somehow. Let's let's definitely do that. Some other day after we've all had more calories and we can think again. Yeah, I, I literally can't think about it. <laughs> right, right now. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, with that, I'm going to grab some food, sorry. Pete, this is the second time this week we've had a call right at noon where I was like, I'm going to eat like an hour. <laughs> and it's like two and a half, three hours later. <laughs> that's, that's rough, man. At least for me, it's only 1130. And, you know, yeah. like, oh, I can go have lunch. I, okay, I, I will now instill a rule here. Whenever someone wants to stop, they can interrupt any conversation, however meaningful. <laughs> okay, let's stop here and let's get going. I, I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. This was a great call. Actually, one more yeah. thing real quick. I would love to see this, <laughs> this kind of demo, except here's a, here's a task list, right? You just found a, a link um, on the web that's amazing and you have to save it. Uh, a link you have to share it. Uh, you just found on something tw like on Twitter, a thread on Twitter, even better, like a multi thing. How do you, how do you save it and share it? Um, you've got too many tabs. What do you do? 
Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see each of us solve that. Um, and mm -hmm. the tool like the same we, problem we, in our own way. The same, the same problem, yeah, in our own way. Yeah. I like yeah. that. And not necessarily completely using our own platforms, I would have not said. Yeah, not at all. Like Actually, how we would, it would how be we would do it. Yeah. How we would do it natively. Did you end up touching your tool or not at all? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That is, I would love to end this call. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you all. Great call. All right. Thanks for the Bye, idea, everyone. Vincent. Awesome idea. Thanks, Vincent. Thanks, everybody. Have Cheers. Weekend, Take care. Bye, Bye guys. Oh wait, I want to save the chat. I just did. <laughs> oh, you did? Okay, cool. I got well, it. Oh no, I you should it. save it too. I'm gonna to upload to the event page and see if it uh Does duplicates the right thing. links, which it probably won't. Uh, uh yeah, good point. So you should Trove should give me a list of links. Cause well, I don't know how you, then you'd have to have a thing where <laughs> but anyway, if you just stuff previous links in the text. They'll get deduped, but then you have to you have to like delete them, right? You have to like put them in the text, delete them from your thing, and then get all of them back from from Link Chainsaw, <laughs> or mark them deleted. I guess you can mark them deleted and then you know unhide them later if it doesn't work or something. Yeah, I might just make it really easy to delete a bunch. I don't That's know. We'll see. <laughs> or, or or have a button that says dedupe. Yeah. 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 Cool, man. Well, thanks, Pete. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Bye.